Now, why is this relationship with the Club of Rome significant? The Club of Rome has long been controversial for its obsession with reducing global population and many of its other policies, which critics described as influenced by eugenics and neo-Malthusianism. However, in the club's infamous 1991 book, titled The First Global Revolution, it was argued that such policies could gain popular support if, if the masses were able to link them with some existential fight against a common enemy. To that effect, the first global revolution contains a passage entitled, The Common Enemy of Humanity is Man, which states the following, In search for a common enemy, against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill in their totality and their interactions. These phenomena do constitute a common threat which must be confronted by everyone together. So do aliens, I guess. But in the but in designating these dangers as the enemy, we fall into the trap, which we have already warned readers about, namely, mistaking symptoms for the cause. All these dangers are caused by human intervention in natural processes, and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. Unquote. So it's not too difficult to understand that the World Economic Forum also holds the same opinion that the that the real enemy of humanity is man. They want to get rid of you. In the years since, the elite that populate the Club of Rome and the World Economic Forum, which has just, has just wrapped up their 2023 meetings in Davos. These elite have frequently argued that population control methods are essential to protecting the environment. It is thus unsurprising that the World Economic Forum would similarly use issues of climate and environment as a way to market otherwise unpopular policies, such as those of the Great Reset. So who is this man? Is he the kindly old uncle figure wishing to do good for humanity, or is he the son of a Nazi collaborator who used slave labor and helped the Nazi efforts to obtain the first atomic bomb? Is Klaus Schwab the honest business manager? who we should trust to create a fairer society and workplace for the common man, or is he the person who helped push Sulzer Escher Weiss into a technological revolution that led to its role in the illegal creation of nuclear weapons for South Africa's racist apartheid regime? The evidence that uh, Johnny Vedmore has seen and presented does not suggest that this is a kindly man, but rather a member of a wealthy, well-connected family that has a history of helping create weapons of mass destruction for aggressive, deadly governments. Klaus Schwab considers himself to be a pace setter and a top table player. And it must be said that his qualifications and experience are very impressive. Yet when it comes to practicing what you preach, Klaus Schwab has been found out. One of the three biggest challenges on the priority list for the World Economic Forum is the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Yet, neither Klaus Schwab nor his father Eugen lived up to those same principles when they were in business. Quite the opposite. 
in January 2021, Klaus Schwab announced that this is the year the World Economic Forum and its allies must rebuild trust with the masses. But if Klaus Schwab continues to hide his history and hide his family's history and their connections to the National Socialist Model Company that was Escher Weiss during the 30s and 40s, then people will have good reason to distrust the underlying motivations of his overreaching, undemocratic, great reset agenda. The story of the Schwab family reveals a habit of working with genocidal dictators for the base motives of profit and power. The Nazis and the South African apartheid regime are two of the worst examples of leadership in modern politics. Yet, the Schwabs obviously couldn't or wouldn't see that at the time. It appears that he has helped to launder relics of the Nazi era, i.e. its nuclear ambitions and its population control ambitions so as to ensure the continuity of a deeper agenda while serving in a leadership capacity at Sulcher Escher Weiss. The company sought to aid the nuclear ambitions of the South African regime. Then, the most Nazi-adjacent government in the world, preserving Escher Weiss's own Nazi-era legacy. Then, through the World Economic Forum, Schwab has helped to rehabilitate eugenics-influenced population control policies during the post-World War II era, a time when the revelations of Nazi atrocities quickly brought the pseudoscience into great disrepute. Is there any reason to believe that Klaus Schwab as he exists today, has changed in any way? Or is he still the public face of a decades-long effort to ensure the survival of a very old agenda? And so the last question that should be asked about the real motivations behind the actions of Herr Schwab may be the most important for the future of humanity. Who is this man? Is Klaus Schwab trying to create the fourth industrial revolution or is he trying to create the fourth Reich? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with you. Tell you what we found out. The hammer comes down and beats you over the head for the rest of your life with a big national security stick. And so that people learn to duck their head and not speak up because bad idea now this is the emergency broadcast system this is not a test repeat this is not a test citizens are advised to take the following steps find us armoroftruth.net in the age of technocracy scientism and pop atheism Okay, folks.